Hello and welcome back to another Pixel Game Maker tutorial. Today is a Patreon request for Midnight Darkness. We wanted to see how to do a grab and throw mechanic for something like a beat em up. So with that said, let's get started. All right, so here we are inside my grab and throw sample. You can find this in my samples pack number two under grab and throw right here. And so when you get into here, you have a scene right here, which is set up with a couple enemies and the player. And so when you play test, you'll be able to see that when you press the space bar in this case, you'll grab one enemy at a time and then you'll throw them. The enemies that get hit with that will get hit. And then if they die, they'll die. If not, they won't. And then after you throw them a certain amount of time because of damage taken, they will also die. And so let's dig into what exactly is going on here. So let's start with objects and just go to the player object here. It's a very simple, just wait and move states. And then we also have a grab state, which is what happens when you press A, and then it's going to go into its, its grab state right here. And then it has a couple exits here. The one is that the, it, the finishes the motion and then a is grabbed enemy is off. That means that there's no enemy grabbed or you press the space bar again when grab enemy is on. And so that is kind of the, the general grasp of it. So you'll try to grab if there is no enemy to grab, then you'll go back to wait. Otherwise, if there is an enemy on, you'll have to press space again to throw them. And this could be like press space and the opposite direction or however you want to do it. This was just the easiest way to show an example. And so let's see what happens when, when you actually grab for an enemy, this is what's actually happening. Let's go to the enemies here. And you can see this enemy is just simply an idle. It's not moving or anything, and it's just constantly looking at the player. That's why it will look back and forth, because I have it moving towards the player object, but no movement associated with it. So it's just changing directions based on the player. And then I put its attack setting is to have the player as an attack group. And I'll show why here in just a second. But um, yeah, that's how that is. So now what we do is we go down here, and we see what condition, what link it would be to grab. And so the links are, is that first off, the player needs to be in that grab action. So we're using specified object action, really useful link to use. And that's going to be the first out one, because we don't want any of these other checks to happen unless the player is in the grab state. So that when you're programming these links and stuff, you want to do something that will be the less resourceful. And so the player is rarely, the most rare thing that's going to happen is that the player is going to be in the grab state. So what's going to happen is it's going to check this one and then it's just not going to continue down. Otherwise, if you have it in other orders, this might always be true, but you're waiting for this one. So you're actually wasting resources by always running these ones instead of just running one at a time. I hope that tip made sense, but, but yeah, you'll be less processing power by using the most rare condition first kind of a thing. If you can, you can't always. All right. So then the next one is I'm using a field of vision to actually detect whether you're in the range. Now I had to use the field of vision because you can't really use anything else. And I wanted something that was scalable. And so the, the most scalable thing to do is to make the FOV on each enemy specifically, because you might have large enemies, you might have short enemies or small enemies. And so this was the easiest thing to do. So in the field of vision here, I just set a grab detection. I made its Y scale very low. I based it all off what the tile size was, which was 16. And then I just made the X scale a little bit higher. So we can see when we apply this, that there is their grab field of vision. And you want it towards the base of their, their being. You don't want, you'll notice that, um, here's the wall detections too. So you'll notice that you want for a beat em up, you want all the detections more by the core. That way you're in line with the, the enemies when you're actually hitting them. So if you're right here and you throw a punch, you don't want the attack detection to be right here. You want the attack detection to be right here. That way you're, you have to be more in line with the enemy to hit them. Okay. But yeah, so you can see that the field of vision is looking for this wall detection. So when my wall detection is right here, that's when it will actually trigger a grab. All right. So that's the detection for, for where the player needs to be in. And again, this was the easiest because this one could be the most flexible, like you can change it depending on your enemy. All right. So if we go back here and we go to the uh, next thing that has to happen, the next thing is, is that is grabbing enemy, which is a common, which has to be off. And so this is how you can get the one time or well, one enemy grab at a time effect is because when, when that switches off and all these other conditions are met, it goes to the grab state and it instantly turns is grabbing an enemy on. Now this process is in such a way where 
once you grab one enemy, that switch will be on before the next enemy's link will register it as off. So, for instance, when we play test here, I can be right here. I can be in both of their field of visions, but when I press space, I only actually grab one. And that is because that common switch turned on. If we looked at it, we could see that that common, whoops, that common switch turned on here. Right here is grabbing enemy, right? So that once that happens, it goes to the grab state. And in here, what this does is first it stops that movement that I was doing just for convenience. This does a stop real quick. And then it also moves object to the player's grab point. And then again, the reason why this kind of works depending on the enemy is you can specify any adjustments per enemy. So if you have an enemy of different size, you can actually adjust it per that. Um, just note, if you do copy this, um, the connection point will go back to not set. So every time you copy this, you'll have to set the connection point. It's kind of, it must be a PGM thing, but the duration is zero. I just put zero and it's the object self. And that it's really just a basic setup here. And then also what I do here, and I mainly do it here so that I don't have to put this in both of these ones, is I change the attack settings to start prepping to be able to hit enemies now. Because when you throw them, you're going to be able to hit enemies. And so I change its object's attack setting to the enemy group. All right. And then from here, if uh, enemy throwing is on, so this is going to be when it's, when it's on, and I'll show you where this turns on. And the X coordinate, so we're checking on what way we're facing from the player. Are we on the right side of the player or are we on the left side of the player? If we are on the right side of the player, we're going to throw it left. If we're on the left side of the player, we're going to throw it right. So let's see where this trigger, where this is throwing enemy triggers. And that's in the player. So when you're grabbing, again, we have this link that says is grabbing the enemies on. And then when you press space, it's going to put you into the throwing state. All right. And that's when you're going to put is throwing enemy on. So that's how you're triggering back to the enemy that, okay, a throw is happening. So we're going to choose one of these depending on the X position of the player. All right. And so it's going to basically reset everything in, in these. It's going to turn is grabbing enemy off, is throwing enemy off. So it's going to kind of reset the, the whole mechanic. And then it's going to move the object. I just had it move or it's going to move to the uh, grab point instantly again. And then it's also going to set move direction to move. And I'm just going to have it, if it's going left, it's just going to go one tile to the left. And if it's going right, it's going to go one tile to the right. Now you could script to this and actually make it to where it doesn't matter. And matter of fact, you would probably want some scripts and plugins doing an actual uh, beat em up or a beat em up game because it would make it a lot easier, I think. But, but this is actually not that bad. So you could do it this way for sure. And then after a certain amount of time passes, so this is just when, um, because you, you have to set up your own hit, like as far as damage goes, because you're not using attack detection, right? So you have to make it damage, right? So what I did is this, um, these enemies have inherently invincibility and they blink. So what I do is, is I wait 20 seconds and that's basically how long this, this animation takes to fall kind of. So then when it hits the ground, it's going to go to apply damage state. And what it's going to do is it's going to turn on invincibility, which is going to make it blink. That's why it blinks. Matter of fact, if I um, copy and paste another one in here, I can just show you uh, real quick that it does blink when you throw it, just kind of like that. All right, so we're going to turn on invincibility so it blinks, and then we're going to have the enemy's HP minus equal the throw damage common variable. And so I did it this way. That way, if you have any thing that enhances the throw damage, you can just add it to this variable and it will consider that as it's applying the damage and stuff like this. And then simply put, it's going to wait a certain amount of time while it's on the ground if it has more HP and then it'll go back to idle. Or if it is dead, then it's going to go into here. It's going to wait one second and then it's going to destroy the object. And so let me turn off the field of vision so that and I'll look at this here, kind of show you what I mean by that. And I'll turn off the wall detection. And so if we go like this, boom, it takes damage. I think these things have two lives. So if I throw it again, it will disappear. 
So that's exactly the, the kind of logic there. All right, so now let's take a look at what is happening when the player or when the enemy actually gets hit. Because if you see, I can throw one. And if you watch these group of enemies, you'll see them get hit. And then I can throw it that way. And then if I throw it again, these ones, those ones should die. And yep, they all die. So what's happening is, remember, the, one of the most important things about this is that I'm changing the attack settings to hit an enemy group. And so I'm running a hit common action, so a, a, a go-to hit state. And what this is looking for is it's looking for a attack detection with any object. All right, so this could be the player group, the enemy group, anything that can actually hit this enemy. And so we're detecting for that. And then we simply, this is a dead end event, which is where you click change if only, if any, and then you give no conditions. And so it's instantly going to jump to the hit state. That's how you jump. So this one's going to trigger from no matter where you're at. So boom, if, if it gets hit, if it gets hit with an attack state, it's gonna go over to here. And so another reason to apply invincibility here so that it does not get hit because if invincibility is active, then an attack, an attack detection won't register. All right, so then it's going to play the hit animation, which is just like this, except for if it has no life. If it has no life, then it's going to play the, the dead animation. And I don't know, I just was finding whatever I could. And it's gonna do the same thing, wait one second, destroy object. Otherwise, after the motion plays out, this hit motion is just gonna go back to idle. And so that is really the gist of it. I'm using basically field of vision, common actions, and a couple switches to really utilize this, um, this grab and throw effect. And the way that it's set up, it's really scalable. You could just add another enemy. You could just copy some of this logic here. You set up the custom field of vision for its grab detection. And then you set up the whatever you need for, for the process. You can make one enemy get thrown you know, in a weird way or, or however you want to do it. But anyway, I think this is a good start. And if you have any questions, you can throw them down in comments below. Steam Forms Discord will get you figured out. That said, I'll see you at the next video.